Okay, so the question is, let's do the magnifying glass case, all right? Um, magnifying glasses are more important than just magnifying glasses because it turns out that the eyepiece of lots and lots of optical instruments turns out to be a magnifying glass, really, okay? And so they're kind of, uh, since they're part of, of, you know, a certain class of microscopes and a certain class of telescopes and things like that, it's worthwhile sort of understanding how a magnifying glass works. And what it also does is it also uh, introduces a new idea of something called the angular magnification. So let me talk about the angular magnification first. Suppose you've got a little bug, an ant or something, all right? And you want to get a really good look at the thing. Um, if I hold it a long way away, it's harder and harder to see his little antennas and his little legs and stuff like that than it is when he's close, okay? Why is that? The reason for that is if you look at an eye, there's an eye, okay? Here's the pupil on the front. That's the part the light goes in, okay? There's a lens behind it and all of that. Here's the optical axis of your eye. Coming out the back, here's your optical nerve and all of that. And so if I put this ant that looks alarmingly like an arrow right there. What's going to happen is the, this eye is going to conspire to make an image of that arrow on the retina of your eye. When the retina of your eye, there are all kinds of little light detectors called rods and cones that do chemical stuff and tell your brain that light is hitting it or not. So if I put this guy here and I image where the image goes, the image of that arrow is going to be right here like that. And my ability to resolve details on that is going to depend upon how many rods and cones the thing hits. Obviously, if that image is so small that it only lights up one rod, okay, the thing is going to look like, an in, it's going to look like a featureless pinpoint of light to me. Okay? So if I want to see it well, the name of the game is to try to make the image on your retina subtend as many rods and cones as possible so that you can resolve details on the object. Does that make sense? If you're not going to buy that, the rest of this isn't going to make any sense. Okay? And so if you want to see it better, you want to make that, that image bigger. And so you say, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this ant right here, right? I'm going to stick him in here like that. And then the ray that goes through the center of the lens is going to come down here like that. I'm going to wind up with an image like this, and I'm going to see the thing much better than I would have done if the thing was a little farther away, right? And all of that's true, except there's a limit to how close you can get something to your eye and still have it focus on your retina, okay? Otherwise, the thing to do is take the ant and put it in like a contact lens, okay, and hope it holds still, and sit there and stare at it when the thing is sitting right on the front surface of your eye. But you can't focus on that. If you, if you take your finger, okay, shut one eye, take your finger and move it towards you, at some point, and for me it's right here because I'm nearsighted, okay, uh, it starts to go out of focus, and I can't really, it becomes sort of a blobby looking thing, even worse than normal, okay. And so there's a limit to how close you can get something to your eye and still make a crisp image of it on your retina. For the average human being, the canonical distance at which you can move something close to you and still see it, okay, is called the near point distance. And the claim is, is that for the average hum human being, the near point distance is 25 centimeters, okay. 10 centimeters is four inches, so that's about 10 inches, okay? If you get closer than 10 inches, you can no longer focus on the thing. So the best you can do with your naked eye is to put that ant 
10 inches or 25 centimeters in front of your eye and sit there and stare at it, okay? So how can you beat that game? You can beat that game with a magnifying glass. What you do is, let's see, is there something else I wanted to say about that? I don't think so. We'll see in a minute. Um, I'll try to draw this freehand. So there's the optical axis, okay? Uh, and what we're going to do is right here, we're going to put a converging lens. So let me draw a thing like that to remind us that that thing is a converging lens. Then the focal point in front, I'm going to put right here, and I'm going to try to draw the focal point in back the same distance away. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ant right at this focal point, okay? And the question is, is where is the image of that ant going to be? Well, let's draw a couple of principal rays, okay? I'm still drawing red and light rays these days. So this guy is going to come out, the parallel one is going to come out like that, and he's going to bend through that focal point like that. That's one of the principal rays that we drew 19 times you know, a minute ago. The other principal ray is going to come through here like this. And the one that goes through this focal point doesn't come into play, right? Because this one goes down here like this and misses the whole work. So you forget about the third one when you have the object sitting right on the focal point, okay? So if you think about it, this distance right here is the same as this distance right here. That height is the same as itself, okay, which is the same as this. And as a result, these two lines over here are coming out parallel to each other. What that means is it looks like they're coming from a point infinitely far off in, in that direction, okay? So now you stick your eye over here. There's your eye. You stick your eye over here and you stare at that whole thing. And it looks to you like the, what, what you're looking at is not this thing, you're looking at the image this thing makes in the lens, which is going to be over here only infinitely big and infinitely far away, okay? So it's going to be a virtual image, very big and very far away, okay? But you see what you've done is instead of having the light rays enter, so here's your eye, okay? Here's the optical axis. Here's the ant sitting there 25 centimeters away. So I'm in centimeters, I won't write centimeters, it's just 25 centimeters away. And so the thing that determines the number of rods and cones that you get over here is how big this angle is, right? If that angle's big, you hit lots of them. If that angle's small, you don't hit so many. And so this angle right here, which I'm gonna call alpha, is gonna turn, for the unaided eye, yeah, when you have the thing you're looking at at your near point, which is by definition is 25 centimeters away, that's what it is for the average person. It's like saying everybody is five foot, eight inches tall, right? Because the average height of people is five, I don't know if that's true or not, I'm making up the number, is five foot eight, right? So it's a lie, right? But it's a nice lie. And so that angle is gonna turn out to be however big the ant actually is, H, divided by 25 centimeters, right? In this case, how big is this angle over here? This angle over here is gonna be h tall, but now instead of being 25 centimeters, it's going to be whatever that focal length is, right? So this, uh, and, and again, I'm doing small angle approximations all over the place. h over f is really the tangent of that angle. But if the angles are small enough, tangents are equal to sine or equal to angles, okay? And so if I look at this thing through the magnifying glass, the, the light entering my eye subtends an angle of, uh, I guess I want to do this in blue, subtends an angle which I'm going to call alpha prime, which is going to be equal to h, same height, same ant, 
divided by f now instead of the 25. And so the angular magnification, which is m with an angle sign on it or something like that, I don't know what symbol the book actually uses, is the angle that the image subtends when you're looking at it with the optical element. So that's going to be alpha prime divided by the, in the case of a magnifying glass or a microscope, the, it's, a, it's a practical thing to do to move the thing to your near point and look at it. So that's what you compare with. Uh, obviously, if, if you're looking at an image of Saturn, you can't move Saturn to your near point and look at it. So there's another definition for those kinds of things. But for the magnifying glass, then what you put there is you put in this angle alpha, and that's going to be equal to h over f divided by h over 25. And so that's equal to 25 over f. And so if you were to make a focal length of 5 centimeter lens here for your magnifying glass, 5 centimeters is just about 2 inches. That's right. Uh, it would turn out that f would be 5, and the angular magnification would then be 5, because 25 divided by 5 is 5. And so you can see that ant five times as well through the magnifying glass as you can with your naked eye, doing the best job you possibly can with your naked eye, which is putting it at your 25 centimeter near point. Okay, that's how magnifying glasses work. The, it, it turns out that your eye has less strain on it looking at distant objects than it does looking at stuff right at your near point. Okay, so the most comfortable place to put an image to look at it is infinitely far away, very distant from you, because your eye is most relaxed looking at very distant things. And so that's why I put this thing at F and made the focal point. If the object is to really maximize the angular magnification, you don't do that. Okay. In fact, the thing to think about here is, do you, you know what a jeweler's loop is? There, it, it, it's sort of a, a lens in a plastic housing or something, and you stick the thing in your eye socket so that the lens is you know, right in front of your eye. Okay? And so the way, those, those are just magnifying glasses, but they're used differently than that. What you do with those things is, Turn this guy on, uh, light bulb me. Okay, what you do is this. So here's the, where the lens is, okay? Here's the optical axis. Here's the focal point in front of the lens, there's the focal point behind the lens, and there's the ant you're trying to look at, okay? If what you do is you move the ant just inside the focal point so that you get a virtual image to look at. Outside the focal point, what's going to be true is the image is going to be over here, right? That, no good. You want to look at something in front of you. You put that thing in exactly the right point so that the distance from the magnifying glass to the image is 25 centimeters. So if you put your eye right here, right behind this thing, like you do with the jeweler's loop, okay, you can look at this image at your near point. Okay, that's going to cause more eye strain. But so what you do is you say, I want to have I be equal to minus 25 centimeters. Okay, and you take the focal length of your lens right here, of, of your magnifying glass, and you, uh, oh, I didn't put the arithmetic on here. Okay. So you'd, you put the, that thing right here. Where did I put that arithmetic? Certainly I did that arithmetic last night. Yeah, I don't know. I'm getting senile. So at any rate, you put that thing right there. And then what you do is you calculate this angle right here, because that's now going to be the angle that the light hits your uh, I at, and the way that it works out, and I don't think I want to spend the time to do the arithmetic, is it works out that the angular magnification for that case 
instead of, and all you've done differently is you've moved the object just inside the focal length so that the image turns out to be uh, at your near point instead of infinitely far away. What you wind up with then is you wind up with a magna angular magnification which is going to be equal to the 25 again over the focal length of the magnifying glass plus one. You get a plus one to go with the 25 over f. So again, if that was a five centimeter focal length and you put it at your near point, you put the image at your near point like that, instead of doing five times as well, you would do six times as well at the cost of lots of ice cream. Okay? So that's basically how magnifying glasses work.